buddy Jeff, your executive gardener, for a special episode. Now, in this episode, I'm going to show you, this is the first time I think I've ever done it, the starting product, which is eggplant in this situation, to the ended product, which is the eggplant parmesan, which we'll eat tonight. So the big reason I garden is to grow fresh food. Fresh food to nourish my family, to nourish my friends, because I have more than I can ever use, and then to teach you how to do the same thing. So a few months ago, my friend Tony, who's away, told me he'd be away and I could use his garden. So one of the things I wanted to plant in the summer and in South Texas, where it is 98 degrees right now, 100% humidity, um, eggplant grows very well. There's a variety of different eggplants that you can grow. I'm growing white eggplant at my house. This is the long Japanese thin eggplant, but it grows very well in the summer heat. And I've never done it before, so I'd start it. So I'm going to show you the success that I'm having behind me in this garden bed. I also want to say that I really appreciate um, all the comments and uh, uh, the well wishes that you give me on YouTube. I love it. This is a great gardening community. All communities have trolls. They're going to be trolls. But the great people who dial in to give me feedback, to give me advice, and to share with all of my subscribers, I love it. So keep it up. I really appreciate you as a gardening family. I'm going to give you a close-up of these Japanese eggplant, what they look like, okay? And uh, just absolutely beautiful. And then I'm going to give you a close-up of the actual garden here, show you what's going on, how many uh, eggplants that I have under here. I'll show you the final harvest that we get today. Uh, and unfortunately, you can't really save eggplant. You can't freeze it. You can if you decide to cut it, uh, blanch it, it's a lot of work. And I just don't feel like going through that much work. So if you're one of my friends here and where I live, and if you're listening, you know who you are, give me a call if you want eggplant for a stir fry, if you want eggplants for uh, eggplant parm or whatever you cook, let me know, uh, or my wife, and we can get that to you. But uh, unfortunately for Tony, uh, he won't be back for a little while. And this doesn't freeze well, so he'll have to miss out on that, unless the eggplant plant survives another month or so. So, um, let me give you a close-up, let you sh show you what the eggplant looks like down and under the leaves. Now here's the bed. We do have, it is a raised bed, and um, eggplant do require a good amount of water, so about a half a gallon each plant in a day should be good in a very hot uh, climate like Houston or any other part of the south. But these eggplants are doing extremely well. I think there's five or six that are in here. Let me give you a close-up and you'll see they're still producing a lot of flowers which means I probably got to get the fruit that's done off of the plant. I don't know if it's a fruit or a vegetable but off the plant so it will allow for others. Plus I'm not the only one who likes eggplant so I'm sure the squirrels will find it as well. Okay but the plants look great. Okay excellent. Uh, and they're still producing more flowers, which means I need to get those existing fruit off. So let's look under the plant and take a look. So if you'll see under there, there's some nice looking uh, eggplant. Uh, there's some under there. I'll turn it around. Uh, there's numerous eggplant under there. And then I'll give you a shot of a few more over here uh, under the plant. There you go. Okay. And there's some over there, okay? So, a beautiful bed of eggplant. Let me harvest these. This is what eggplant should look like. It's a very healthy plant. No disease, even though all the rain that we've gotten. Again, lots of flowers still. Let me get these off, and then I'll show you the final harvest. So there you have it, one day harvest. It looks like there's about 15 Japanese eggplant. Look pretty good. There's a bunch that are still on there. I'm going to let them go a little bit longer. They look a little bit... I'm going to give them a few more days to, to grow, get a little bit bigger, but that's about what they look like. Really good. There'll be some good eats. Wash them up and get them back to the garden, or back to the uh, to house. Let me show you some of the other part of the garden. You saw this a few weeks ago, but I'll show you kind of what's going on. So as you can see, uh, we've uh, across the... Uh, all across the, uh, the fence here, we've done those cucumbers and uh, again if you take a look at the cucumbers I just picked about 13 yesterday uh, there's still a lot of cucumbers that are here okay uh, and this is the variety that, that has more male flowers than female 
as you can see they're all just about male flowers and they're all cucumbers so uh, yeah, you can do what you want but I wouldn't waste your time um, getting standard um, like Boston Boston pickling cucumbers or some of the others because uh, you're just not going to get as many uh, male flowers or excuse me female flowers and anyway there's a bunch more anyway uh, let's go around here so uh, also growing down here are some melon so you'll see that there's actually one melon that is popped up right there I think that's a honeydew melon and all across uh, the other side of the fence you have more cucumbers that are growing uh, again I picked many of these yesterday more cucumbers squash didn't do that well uh, take my advice if you're growing squash in Houston don't um, the uh, vine borer will ruin it every time so that didn't do that well I have to pull that out of Tony's garden um, the rest is cantaloupe and so forth so I don't see any cantaloupe yet but um, a lot of buds so let me show you a few here if I can find them um, so there's one right there um, a female flower here's another one another one so those are all cantaloupe and I just gotta let the bees do their work um, it looks like it was a little bit messed up we had uh, we had the torrential rains from last week we had a tropical depression that um, messed things up a little bit so that may have messed things up uh, more cucumbers as you can see there uh, more cucumber vines got a ladybug ladybugs doing its work keeping the aphids off but overall uh, pretty good uh, Tony I'm doing my best to control the weeds here uh, but the weeds uh, because of the rain seem to never end they can seem to keep popping up so this is uh, you know kind of the rest of uh, Tony's garden it looks pretty good um, lots of vining type plants and uh, everything is looking pretty good except the squash I got to pull that so um, the next update I'll give you is what the actual eggplant looks like when we make eggplant parm so uh, I'll catch up in next video you, uh, next part of the video you'll see is the actual eggplant parm all right, we're back in the kitchen. Here's three different eggplants you can grow. So you got the Japanese eggplant. You've got I uh, can't remember the name of this. This is kind of a uh, kind of a cool looking purple and white striped, and then just a white eggplant. So uh, now what I did with these eggplants, these Japanese eggplants, I'm going to make egg parm. So I sliced them long ways. So you see, I uh, sliced them long ways. And then what you're going to do is just uh, use a brush and put some olive oil all over all of it. Put it in the oven for 325, 350 for about seven minutes to, just to allow that olive oil to, to kind of bake in. And there's more there. Then what you're going to do, and I'll show you the final product, is layer this on the bottom. Then you want to put some marinara sauce, some salt and pepper, some Parmesan cheese, mozzarella cheese, and then layer another uh, layer on top. Same thing, same thing, same thing. So we're going to have a layered eggplant parm, and it should be really good. This is all from uh, what we took today, and actually we still have uh, nine more, so I only cut up a few. But when you're using the Japanese, you obviously want to cut it lengthwise. Uh, if you're doing stir-fry, you can cut it this way. Uh, and then just, again, here's two other uh, types of eggplant to grow. I'll come back with the final product. All right, everybody, so here's the final product from backyard garden to table. So this is, uh, actually looks pretty good. I'll give you a close-up there. This is eggplant and chicken parm combined together. Of course, I use some breading in there with some breading and some egg and so forth, and I'm going to feed the family. So actually, my we have four in my family, and they're having a friend over, so they should love it. But uh, it's great to be able to uh, reap the rewards of your harvest so look at that beautiful chicken and eggplant parm um, love it so I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video again this is the first one I've actually shown you from picking to baking and eating so look forward to eating it's going to be delicious until next time Jeff your executive gardener take care